What's up, guys? Welcome back to the Skeleton Closet, where we talk celebrity news and hot topics. My name is JC, in case you are new here. And this past week has been an interesting one. So let's just get right into the video. I'm gonna just run down my shout outs. The dun dun. <laughs> And when I say interesting, I mean life altering because y'all, I could have died. Let's just start there. I could have died. Not this past Friday, but the Friday before last, I, I was in a very, very scary accident where the car flipped, glass was broken, the car was on its side, I was bleeding, I was in pain. It was a lot. I'm not exaggerating when I say I could have been taken from this side, like, it was a very scary accident, but luckily enough, I am still here. I'm still breathing. However, I am still in some pain. I'm still sore, bumped, and bruised, okay? As you can see from my battle wounds, I have to be thankful and grateful that I am still here and I'm still alive. If 2020 didn't teach us anything, it is that life is precious and that it can be taken away from you in the blink of an eye. And I was literally reminded of that like within the matter of like a minute, like not joking with y'all. And I want to say thank you to everybody that reached out and to everybody that sent me and Aaron well wishes. Definitely appreciate it. Definitely appreciate the love and definitely appreciate the thoughts and prayers. Thank you guys so much. But I am on the mend. I'm doing a lot better. I'm still sore, but we are here and we got a job to do. With that being said, we have to talk about the view, the ladies of the view, what happened, the producers doing an awful job this past Friday and how Sonny Hostin feels about it. So let's just start with the fact that the ladies were set to interview Kamala Harris, the vice president of the United States at a time where the administration is, is facing a lot of different battles on a whole bunch of different fronts, whether it is the migrant crisis at the South border, the desperate humanitarian relief that Haiti needs, the assassination of their president, the submarine deal that was botched, um, France being upset about it, the infrastructure bill that is stalled in the Senate, the police reform act that seems to be getting nowhere in the Senate as well, voting rights that is stalled, gun reform on the heels of violence with guns in America. Um, the list goes on and on and on and on. There's a lot of different things that are happening with the administration on a whole bunch of different fronts, and it doesn't seem like they're able to get anything under control. Um, one of the things that might, that might actually be going okay for them is COVID relief and the rollout with COVID booster shots and getting people vaccinated. That seems to be going well. There has been some new numbers where people seem to be taking more more of a conscious effort to be more educated with COVID, even after the drama with Nicki Minaj saying that it can make you impotent as well as swelling your testicles and that whole drama last week. The whole odd moment hearing Jen Psaki say Nicki Minaj's name during the press briefing, I don't know about y'all, but that was an indication that the simulation was breaking for a second. I don't know. It was just odd to me to hear the press Secretary of State Nicki Minaj in the White House. I just thought that was so odd. This would have been a very great opportunity for the administration itself to be able to answer these questions directly from someone as smart as Kamala Harris with someone as smart as Sonny Hostin on The View. Like, The View would have been a great opportunity for her and the administration to answer the questions that a lot of Americans have about all these different issues whether it is police reform, coronavirus, the migrant crisis, etc. It would have been a great opportunity and the ball was dropped. They fumbled the bag with this one. Like the view definitely fumbled the bag with this situation. And when I say fumbled the bag, they fumbled the bag. Like this was a very, very huge missed opportunity on the part of the producers. And whoever administered those rapid tests need to go back and do some more training because I don't know if it was on the part of human error or the test itself, but somebody needs to be held responsible for those tests coming back falsely positive. All right. Because this was a huge missed opportunity for the show. Sonny Hostin is not happy about it. 
I don't know if she's more upset about the fact that they missed this opportunity to ask the Vice President of the United States some very hard-hitting questions, or the fact that her health information was publicized on live television for the world to see. Take a look at this. There was an incredible, um, you know, outpouring of love and support from so many people. Mm -hmm. um, and I appreciate it so much. Social media, I got hundreds, really thousands of, of messages, calls, uh, text messages. It was, it was pretty incredible. I didn't know people liked me that much. <laughs> so <laughs> thank you for that. Um, but it was really uncomfortable for my results <laughs> to be um, released publicly before um, I even knew what was going on. Um, before they were verified, before I was tested again and again. And there are real life ramifications when things like that happen. My husband is a surgeon, as everyone knows, and um, he was in the operating room and had to be pulled out of the operating room because God forbid he's operating on someone and he's COVID mm. positive. My, my child's school had to be notified and she had to be pulled out. Uh, my parents had to be rushed to be tested. And um, my son was notified at school as well. And so these are the sorts of real life things that were happening. And for me, it was particularly triggering because not too long ago, I delivered the eulogy at my uh, in-law's funeral. So you can imagine how I felt thinking that I could possibly be COVID positive and my family could experience another loss, a loss that I don't think my husband could handle. As you can see, Sunny becomes emotional talking about this because coronavirus has taken a toll on her family. She talks about often how she's lost both of her in-laws and the virus has caused a lot of stress with her family. And in this situation, she was thinking about her husband, her kids, the producers, the people that have been around her. And she becomes emotional talking about this because she was worried about her health, but not only the health of her children, but the health of her husband, who is an operating surgeon. And she wanted to make sure everybody that was around her was safe while worrying about her own health at the same time. She becomes emotional because this has been publicized without her being able to talk to her husband and her kids first. She's upset because she didn't have any say so in this. And if you already know, Sunny Halston has a tumultuous past with ABC and the show itself. And she didn't want to seem like the angry black woman, so she just rolled with the punches in the moment. But she's definitely letting the producers of the show know that she's not happy about the way that this played out on national television, live national television at that. Personally, I cannot blame her because I would be feeling the same way. How dare y'all expose me and my personal information on live television without disclosing it to me first? And allowing me the opportunity to speak with my family before you all do this. I would be livid. Brian Teta tried to clean this up a bit. And he had this to say about the situation. He says, it was just an unbelievable set of circumstances. And we found out moments before we came back on air. When he says back on air, previous before they announced that Sonny and Anna had coronavirus, they were on a commercial break. I'll get into the way that it should have been handled after I read his statement. He says, and in that moment, all I could think of was that we had to keep the host safe and we had to keep the vice president safe. She could not walk out no matter what. And I agree with that. And that led to some really awkward television that I'd like to have back if I could. But I really want to acknowledge and apologize to Sonny and Anna because in the midst of all of this chaos, they were put in the, this position where they had this information put out on television. It was unfortunate that mistakes were made, but I can confidently say that we have very vigorous safety protocols, that everyone is regularly tested, and that I am just so relieved that you guys are healthy, that everyone is healthy, and nobody was ever in danger. Now, it is important that he says this because you don't want a PR disaster where <laughs> the media attacks the show for exposing the vice president to coronavirus and that it is important also to mention that she was never in danger. So it is good that he mentioned that and that nobody on the show tested positive, actually tested positive for coronavirus and everybody was safe. It is also good that he apologized to Sonny and Anna because this is a breach of privacy. Exposing their information on live television without them having the say so in it is a breach of privacy. 
It would have been a different set of circumstances had those ladies just been told in their ears that you tested positive for coronavirus, we're going to have to escort you off of the set during the next commercial break, and that we'll address it when we come back to the show. It would have been different had that happened and the ladies went to their respective social media accounts and told the world that they tested positive and they had to be escorted off set and that their families were safe and that they were safe in quarantining had that been the case, that they actually tested positive for coronavirus. However, that did not happen. The ladies' information was blasted all over the airways without them being able to have any say-so in it. Brian Tedda exposed them for being allegedly testing positive for coronavirus. What we now know that those tests were false positives. Yes, people do make mistakes, but as a producer, you are responsible for situations like this. You are responsible for rolling with the punches, especially during live television. You're supposed to be able to cut to commercial. You're supposed to be able to know what to do when things like this happen. Brian Tedder, I'm pretty sure this is not your first day on the job. You could have handled the situation a lot better. And you bear the responsibility for this. Whether or not Sonny and Anna want this to just be brushed under the rug and consider this water under the bridge is up to them. But personally, I think that someone needs to be held responsible for this situation because this shouldn't be taken lightly. As the executive producer, you should have been on your A game. You could have done a much better job at this. And to say the least, this was botched. And clearly, Meghan McCain thinks so too because she took to her Twitter and said some things that have now been deleted. Nutmeg, if you're gonna say something, say it with your whole chest and leave it up, okay? Don't chicken out when the heat is hot and you can't take the backlash that you're gonna get for what you said, all right? You're not on the show anymore. If you want your 15 minutes of fame outside of The View and you're still riding on the coattails of The View, say it with your whole chest. She tweets saying, trust your instincts, kids. Basically, good that I got out when I did and I had a feeling that I should have left. I'm glad that I left because it was a shit show. I'm glad that I left because the producers don't have the best interest at heart of the host. That's what I was getting the gist of from that tweet. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below about Megan McCain's shady tweet towards the ladies of The View. If you were going to say anything at all, it should have been, I'm so happy that the ladies are safe. I'm happy that my previous co-hosts and my friends, quote unquote, we all know that they're not friends. Nutmeg is a very difficult person to work with and I don't think she has any friends on the show. But it would have been nice for her to extend some sort of courtesy and some type of empathy towards the ladies considering how this was a very scary situation for them. And I have to wonder whether or not Sonny's message to all the haters during her segment today had something to do with Meghan McCain as well. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section about that because I'm pretty sure the ladies know what Meghan McCain tweeted and deleted. But I think it was pretty shitty of her to say that. I think a better response would have been like, I'm glad that they are okay. I'm glad that they are safe. I think it would have been more than appropriate to say, I'm glad that they are also vaccinated because now that gives us some sense of relief that they aren't going to have very severe illness. You know, something along those lines, instead of trying to throw shade, that just goes on to show that Nutmeg is not that good of a person. And that might also be why Whoopi decided to renew her contract for four more years to be on The View. I'm pretty sure that those two coincide with one another. I have to believe that Whoopi was over Nutmeg's antics and her princess ways because it was literally not even a week after she announced that she was leaving that Whoopi was set to remain on the show for four more years. She renewed her contract and she's gonna be on the show for four more seasons. I think there is a conversation to be had about Whoopi doing more moderating than commentating but that is a different conversation for a different day but there's somebody else looking for their 15 minutes of fame and riding on the coattails of the view so they can get some more engagement on their social media accounts and that is none other than donald trump jr he went on his twitter to have a sort of um disgusting thing to say about Anna Navarro and her weight saying that I think it's time to have a conversation about COVID and obesity. Anna Navarro fires back at Donald Trump Jr. and says, babe, I take a shot at my weight every day. 
I have a mirror. How about you look in yours? And how about you go talk to your fat father and ask him how he dealt with COVID and his obesity. All right. If you want to have that conversation, call up your pappy and talk to him about it because I don't want to you leave me out of it. All right. Leave me out of your drama and don't try and have a public dig with me because if you want to throw shade, I'm going to throw the whole forest and I'm much better at it than you. I don't have a twice impeached disgraced former president as a father. Not only that, a sexual assaulter as a father. I think you have better things to be worried about, okay, than me and my weight and me possibly testing positive for COVID. How about you go talk to your father who is 245 pounds and how he felt during his time with COVID. I'm pretty sure everybody remembers him on the balcony at the White House, breathing hard, having a difficulty time breathing. I'm pretty sure the weight and COVID had some difficulties on his body. Call him, have a conversation with him about his weight and how he felt while having COVID, while being obese. All right, the call is coming from inside of the house, sir. Don't come for me because I will throw a whole force at you. That's what Alan Navarro was saying today on The View. Not only throwing the shade at his father, but also him saying, first of all, I mean, I know that when you are a dimwit with no skill or talent or significant accomplishments, living off of your father's fame and name and fortune, you've got to draw attention to yourself. But baby, if you want to have a conversation about COVID and obesity, you could have had it last October when your elderly obese father had it. Like I said, the call is coming from inside of the house. Call your father at Mar-a-Lago and have that conversation, but don't come from Anna, okay? As a personal fan of Anna Navarro, don't do it. Don't you do it. But it makes sense. You have to do the dirty work of your father because he doesn't have a Twitter anymore. But one thing that you know that you should not do in this time and age is talking about a woman's weight and her appearance. Leave that alone. Don't talk about it. And that is my problem with a lot of conservatives is that you want to have this conversation, but you're not talking about the issues. You're not talking about what actually needs to get done. And that's when you know that you have lost is when you result to having personal attacks and personal digs. And you can't talk about the actual issues because you've lost what you have to say about the situation or the agenda or the problem at hand. Whatever you're going to come back with isn't even based in fact that you have nothing else to say. Your results in talking about someone's personal appearances and the way that they look opposed to the actual issue at hand. That's how you know when somebody's lost and that's how you know that you are winning. All right. So let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below about this situation that happened on the episode of The View this past Friday. Whether or not Sunny is over the situation, if she's going to, you know, just brush her shoulders off and just continue to move forward. But if you know, like I know, Sunny already got her beef with ABC and the producers. So this might just be another chapter in her burn book with ABC and The View. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. Let me know how you felt about Ana Navarro testing this past week and this week. And who the producers are going to bring in as a flashback host. Who they're testing this week as a conservative voice. I am just, ugh. I need that conservative voice on the show. I need the conservative voice on the show because it allows for it to be more diverse. I understand that the ladies all enjoy each other, but the best thing about Meghan McCain being on the show was that she didn't agree with them all the time. And I think that that is good for TV. Even though that she was a princess and she was aggravating because she was a spoiled brat, but we still need that differing viewpoint. As well as Meg McCain and Donald Trump Jr. having the audacity to say anything at all about the women testing positive for coronavirus on The View, especially Meg McCain. Sis, I, I had much respect for you at one point, but at this point you're clicking and you're clicking down for me in the respect column. I am losing the respect that I had for you because you continuously show how much of a brat that you are. And you're living up to, to your princess of Arizona name. And Nutmeg, you will remain in infamy and not for good reasons. Sorry, sis. But it is what it is. Let me know what you guys think about all that down in the comment section below. How you feel about Nutmeg shading the ladies of The View. Donald Trump Jr. putting his foot in his mouth when he should have just been quiet. 